and listen, there's going to be 20 ish, 30, if I'm lucky, more weekends like this in the coming year. But knowing that this is how I can get myself back on the horse for the following week for whatever auditions come, it makes it much more doable. These are not big problems, but our brains can build them into big problems. So if we can't find ways to process the small things, it's going to be really hard to process the big things when we get there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the One Broke Actress Podcast, an honest account of actor life, plus a few lessons I learn in the process. I am your host, Sam Valentine, and today we're doing a YouTube video slash podcast. I have a big iced coffee, and we're just going to roll with it because today we're doing a podcast slash YouTube kind of about the week I just had, and... I think it's a really good lesson on bringing yourself out of being down in the dumps when there's really legitimately nothing to be down in the dumps about. It's kind of redefining our victories and finding them in different ways. So let me kind of explain what I'm talking about. So last week, I had a week that was, on the whole, very good. I felt like I got a lot of work done. I had a really great audition that resulted in a really great callback. That was in person, by the way. I got to go to an in-person acting session and work with another actor, with the director and producer, and actually like work through a scene a couple of times with direction. It was just like, like beautiful, beautiful moment. I got noticed that an audition that I had filmed very quickly after I got home from a trip the previous week, I got put on a veil for, and it's for a casting office that's new to me. So that was really exciting. And I kind of held in limbo for the last couple of days of the week, waiting to find out what was going to happen, only to find out none of them were going to happen. (laughs) The production that was from the callback was kind enough to reach out and say like, hey, we loved your work for this reason. Like it was a lovely like compliment sandwich type of email. It was lovely working with you. You did great on these things. We're going in a different direction but we hope to work with you again soon. Like one of those lovely, but the fact that they sent it was just so kind. I just want to state that for anyone who's listening, who's not an actor, who perhaps has the ability to send those type of emails because it was an in-person callback, because I had to get COVID tested. There were so many pieces that went into the puzzle of getting into that room and it was for an indie film. So of course that's a different scenario than when you have like 800 actors you're seeing. But because it was so specific, it was so sweet that they reached out and they were like, hey, it's not you, but also we really like you. Do I need to like lean into those compliments and take them to heart and take them super seriously? Not necessarily. Do I need to like marinate on the fact that it's not me? No. And we'll kind of get into that in a second. And then the commercial avail, (laughs) hey, really excited because the big commercial I filmed last year still hasn't played and I would love for it to play. And for those of you who might not understand that side of the world, when you do something like that, like you book a commercial and it hasn't played yet, you get like a holding fee every 13 weeks roughly. And it's a small amount of money in comparison to what you could get if they played the commercial. And so we're kind of just like holding on that, hoping it plays. I've booked three national commercials now that haven't played. So that's hard. But I also at least have the ability to not count my chickens before they hatch. I never spend the money that I don't have because I like expect it to come. I always anticipate that something's never going to air. So I take the experience for what it is and try not to require more from it. But there's still that like little thing in the back of your mind that's like, this could be this amount of money if you got it. And I just have to like, block it out. So to get put on a veil for another commercial was really exciting, but I definitely would have heard about that one by now. And I haven't. (laughs) So it's also not happening. So that means last week was a bunch of like highs, like really exciting. Oh my gosh. I think like these things are lining up. Wow. This could be such a week. Like I do this and I do this and I do this only for nothing to actually come to fruition. And that left me in a sad place. (laughs) So it doesn't matter what the catalyst is that puts you in that place. You have to acknowledge that you are in that place. 
And this is the place of like, what am I doing this for? Nothing's going to work. Am I ever going to book? Is this ever going to execute? Will I ever like be able to close the circle? These are all thoughts we all have, by the way, just because I have a platform where I talk about acting all the time doesn't mean I'm always 100% confident in my own acting. In fact, I feel like the opposite might be true that I feel like I have to double down on being so good or whatever, or have all this street cred in this business because I talk about acting all the time. But any of you could have this much to say about acting. You just choose to spend your time in other places, which sometimes might be a wise decision. (sighs) So what's a girl to do? Not feeling great, going into the weekend, feeling like a bag of mush, not really trusting yourself in her job. Where do we go from here? So I'm going to talk you guys through what I did to get over it this weekend to actually have a good time, to enjoy myself, and to get myself back in a place where I can get back in the game today, which is a Monday. And if I wake up feeling like trash bag on a Monday, I did not utilize my weekend properly. This I know for sure. So here's what I did. So on Friday, when I got the email that nothing was happening with the film, when I found out that, I mean... They don't tell you that the commercial's not happening, but like, it's not happening. There's been no calls. There's been follow-up. It would have happened by now. It's not happening. So with that all happening, I was like, I have to feel these feelings. (laughs) I have to ride this wave of emotion because I know for me, if I do not do that, I will sit in it and I will feel like shit. It will permeate other areas of my life as well as the business. So I sat right over there, which is where my treadmill is. I finished up part of my work on Friday morning and I sat on my treadmill and my husband came over and he was like, you're not feeling so good. I was like, I feel really sad. And he put his arms around me and he held me and I cried. And I said, all of the trash stuff that was in my brain from that past week, I said, all of the things that were floating around. So then I materialized them in front of me. And then I was able to dump them in the trash. These are the thoughts I was having, the ones I was saying before, like, this is never going to work out. Once again, I couldn't close the deal. I'm not what anyone's looking for. Maybe there's just no roles for me. All of that mental trash for me personally to get it away, I have to say it. Because if I think in my head something and I'm like, oh, that's not true. Is it? (laughs) And I will leave like an ellipsis or a question mark at the end of the sentence and I will not close the deal on it. I will not put it out of my mind. So I said all those things out loud and then I said, I know none of those are true. I just don't feel good about it. And because we have this level of communication, my husband knows to allow me to say those things, to get them off of my chest and then to come in with the How much of that do you want me to dissuade you from right now? What do you need? And so I dumped it all right there and I had my cry because I don't know about you guys, but I cry a lot. I had my cry and then I went and took a fucking shower. If you are not someone who does a post cry shower, I don't know if we could be friends. Sometimes, you know, there's a pre cry shower, but that's when you're in bad place. You can't really get yourself out of. That's a different story. But if I have a post cry shower, I feel like wash it away, be done with that part of me. And let's go what's next. Something about the water on my face, maybe it brings down, I don't know, the puffiness and the redness of my eyes that get so bad when I'm crying. But after I felt that wave of emotion, said all my trash things, said, I know these are wrong, but now I know for a fact that I've said them out loud and we can move on. And then I went and took a shower. I know these are little things, but they make a huge difference. I then blow dried my hair and I put myself together, cleaned myself up, And I don't think we didn't even do anything on Friday. I just cleaned myself up and put some time and effort into feeling like me. And just the simple act of taking a shower and blow drying my hair, as stupid and vapid as it sounds, brought me back to like, nothing's different than it was five days ago. Nothing's wrong. And I know some of you are thinking like, oh my God, those are huge wins. And they are. But at the time I had to feel my feelings that they weren't. So I could get to a place where I do accept them as wins. 
So that Friday night, we stayed in. We watched, I think we watched a couple episodes of Wednesday. We're watching Wednesday right now. It's pretty good. That's not my favorite show in the world. A little too many one-liners, but like, it's pretty fun. I, like fun to watch, fun to look at, like a gentle digression from other stuff we've been watching that have been a little too heavy. So it was just a nice night. And like I said, stayed in, didn't do anything, but was able to not spend my time thinking about myself, which is sometimes where I can go wrong in these areas. Cut to Saturday. Saturday morning, wake up, have the morning, take my time, take my day. And I specifically made plans with a friend to go work out. Now, this doesn't have to be a workout. This could be walking your dogs. This could be a long phone call, which is also something I did later. This could be, you know, a FaceTime catch up. This could like involve someone else in your day to day in some small way. For me, moving in some capacity really makes my self, my body, my mental state better in 7 million different ways. And so I had a workout arranged with a friend. Went in there, by the end of it, the last thing I could think about was my own shit. The last thing I could think about was a commercial I did in book, right? It was just moving, being in the moment, staying with the person I was with. And this was a hit class at Brick CrossFit, which is in Hollywood. And it was really fun. It's called BX. And I really, really liked it. And it was really nice to just like shake out the shit. You know what I mean? Like it's really hard to do wall ball thrusters for 25 reps and then do box jumps and still think about your bullshit (laughs) to really try to move in that capacity and not be in the moment. So that was really nice. So then got all that out of the way and then got home after I did my like Saturday errands, like running to my mailbox and all of that stuff. I then got on the phone with my friend, Gabrielle. You guys have probably seen Gabrielle been lost. She was on the podcast previously. She is a really prolific actor in Atlanta. She talks a lot about the acting business there. Her Instagram's great. You guys should definitely follow her. And she and I got on the phone. We talk every couple of weeks And she is someone, and if you don't have this type of person in your life, you need to get one. She is my, let's talk honestly about how we feel about our business and life today person. And because weirdly, we've never met in person, (laughs) we have zero friendship baggage. We have zero competitive spirit with each other. We only have the, what can I learn from you today? And what can I tell you? And what can we share together? And she and I met through Sarah Mornell's class and we have not stopped talking since then. I think it's been like a year and a half. And every time we get on the phone, we just word vomit about where we're in the business, how we're feeling, what's happening, what kind of auditions we've had, what they've been like. Here's someone we like to follow on the internet. Here's someone we think is like kind of shady. Here's some, we have really honest talks. And it's great because she knows where I'm coming from. She knows sometimes how hard it is to see the victory in the bullshit, right? That forest for the trees situation. Having a person like that is a game changer in this business. And if you're thinking, I do not have someone like that. I do not have a person I talk to. I am going to tell you to get on it. You need to have an actor community to lean into because this business is so weird and nuanced. And if you're trying to describe what it is like to not book something you got excited about with someone who's like an accountant, it's not going to translate as well. And you might get a little frustrated and you might not even want to talk about it. It's like not even worth explaining. That's the way I feel sometimes. So have someone that you can call and run these things through with. Because by the end of that call, I was like, we're good. We're so good. All of these things are adding up to create a situation where I can do this job again. And none of these things are standalone things. I think you need someone to talk to as much as you need someone to hug you. I think you need to do whatever you need to shake it out of your body as much as you need to have your good cry. And having someone to just really share the ins and outs with, obviously I do that with you guys. I do it on the podcast and the YouTube and the Instagram and the TikTok and the email list. 
<laughs> my God, are you so sick of me? Sometimes I'm sick of me. And between all of that, the ability to, to connect with actors is incredible, but you need a few people who know exactly where you are in this game, in this business, and who can take the time to talk it through with you when you have one of these days. Also, just so you know, those same people are going to be your biggest fans when you book. They're going to be your biggest excitements. They're going to be the people that you get to call and tell. And like, it's going to be a par tea, the next one of us book something. We share it. So we get to share the good along with the bad, and then we can leave it as it is. We know none of these jobs define us in our careers, and none of them are going to be the thing. There's no the thing. It's always this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And then that's how we function. That's how we can continue to do this job. So redefining those victories on the phone with someone who gets it, was huge. We talked for, I think, like 90 minutes, which was so nice. So back to like the structure of the weekend, right? Then my husband and I went grocery shopping, do it every week. We do it together because it's so much easier to feed two people when you're both at the store. Okay. Do you want your hot, easiest grocery store tip ever? Here you go. Take your grocery list, write it all out with the little check boxes, make it a note. If you have a partner, roommate, anybody you're with, anybody you buy groceries with, make it a shared note. So they are equally responsible for the process. Okay. Before you go grocery shopping, look through your cabinets, look through your fridge, check all of the boxes of the stuff that you don't need. Cause you probably buy the same shit every single week. We definitely do. Then you take that same grocery list to the grocery store, go buy that stuff, come home, uncheck the boxes, add anything you missed, do it again the next week. <laughs> it's so much easier and it's so much cheaper than having groceries delivered, which I have done in a pinch many times, especially on the way home from the airport. It's an Instacart time, but just day to day, man, every Friday, Saturday or Sunday, we go to the grocery store. We use the same list. If we want to add something during the week, we put it on there. Seamless. So that's one of the errands that could be really daunting when you're feeling like shit. Same with like doing laundry. Same with the reason I took a shower. When you are down in the dumps, if anyone has ever experienced those feelings, you know that the dumbest shit feels like torture or it feels impossible. So getting some of that out of the way in the easiest way possible, it's highly, highly recommended. We also went over to our friend's house after we got groceries, who was out of town, who had a bunch of flowers blooming in his yard. And he called us and said, hey, my flowers are going to die. It's going to get cold again. Do you guys want to go pick a bunch of flowers? Hell yeah. I love fresh flowers. Love them. Love them to death. And for free? Are you kidding? Absolutely. And it was just another thing to take us out of the mundane side of the routine to go and do something like that. It was so nice. We picked a bunch of flowers and he also had like kumquats on his tree, which was great. Those are freaking delicious. We took him some beets. <laughs> like There's just a garden full of stuff that he wasn't using. And it was also a nice reminder and when you're looking for these things in your mindset shifts, you will find them. You just have to look for them. It was a nice reminder that LA is full of beautiful people and amazing things. On the days that I get frustrated with this business and my life here, I look around and I try to find the beautiful things. Having a friend who calls us out of nowhere because they're in Sweden and says, hey, do you want to pick my flowers? What? Where else does this happen from? <laughs> I think that's so special and cool. And that would not be something that I would have looked for specifically as a mindset shift if I did not have this concept in mind of ways I was helping myself this weekend. So that was another really lovely moment that we got to have that just moved the needle a little bit more to like, mm, life in LA is pretty good. It's not so bad. This is a beautiful thing. Came home, dumped the groceries, put the flowers in a beautiful vase. And then we had friends over. Sometimes when you're feeling down in the dumps, the last thing you want to do is socialize, especially in person. However, you have to know yourself. Are you an introvert? Are you someone who, when you're feeling down, you need to go solo, you need to turn off your phone, you need to turn off your notifications and just be, you do you. You need to know this about yourself. And this is another part of the growing yourself as an actor thing is figuring out how you function to sustain in this business. Because figuring out how you function and sustain this business is the ticket to staying here long enough to accomplish anything. Losing this piece of the work 
will indeed fail you later on in your career. Of that, I am certain. I cannot tell you how to book a movie tomorrow. I cannot tell you for sure how to book a TV show tomorrow. And anyone who promises you that I strongly believe is trash. But I can tell you for a fact that if you can work on your systems and figure out what works for you to maintain your longevity in this business, you will be here long enough for shit to happen. Steps off soapbox. (laughs) So I'm an extrovert. If you're an introvert and you need that quiet time, cool figure it out, figure out what works for you, play around with it, figure out does introvert meaning like one to two friends? Does it mean you take in your friend's cat for the weekend? Does it mean you need to watch your nostalgic children's movies? Figure out you. For me, I'm an extrovert. I, even if I'm like, I'm so tired, I don't want to do anything. You catch me out at something, I'm like off and popping. I feel like a million bucks. I love to be around people. And even when I'm exhausted and tired, I get energy from being with people. I have almost never, I can count the times probably on one hand that I've gone out into the world when I didn't feel like it and come home and not thought, I'm so glad I did that. I get energy from people. And that for me is how I can translate myself to a different mental playing field when I'm having one of these hard times. So had people over, we had a game night. It is my favorite thing to do. And I know some people don't like game nights. I know they're like childish or stupid or whatever, but we're not fancy people. We are game night people. We are the game bowls. It's also called celebrity. Really fun. Look it up one of my favorites. We're that kind of people. We played mafia too. I think we had 12 or 13 people over to our house. So it was a lot of people. We just got some extra snacks, told people to bring what they wanted to drink or eat and hung out. And I do not laugh as hard in any other scenario as I do when we have friends over at our house. Because I have, it's like my family. And I have my dogs and we have snacks and like everyone's just having a good fucking time. And that is my goddamn favorite. I love it. And I get so much joy from it. And it powers me up in such a certain way. It's like feeding the soul. Yeah, I'm that person. Game nights feed my fucking soul. I also think this is a very accessible thing to do because it doesn't cost very much money. It's very easy to get stuck in the train of like, I can't go out. I can't live my life because I don't have enough money and these towns are expensive. I understand that, but also find a way around it. Find what works for you. We bought a couple extra bags of snacks, a couple extra things here to pop in the air fryer. By the way, cooked in the air fryer. If you follow me on Instagram, you know the air fryer thing has been a debacle. Love this thing. Love it. So it was a very low key way for us to get a lot of people and a lot of energy into a room. Also, my husband and I aren't drinking right now. We decided to take a few months off to just check in on ourselves, take care of ourselves. If you guys have been here a long time, last year I took six months off of alcohol and it was a very interesting process. And since then, it hasn't really been a big part of my life, but I decided to work with my husband on this one and we're just kind of like avoiding it doesn't change much for me. I'm going to be honest with you. It's kind of just another day at the office and I feel better. I feel way better having a game night or a movie night or like going out because I know the next day has nothing changed. Not to say that I would never have like a glass of wine again or a cocktail again, but right now it's not on the table, but that didn't change anything. In fact, I think it helped me quite a bit in the shifting of my mindset because I didn't participate in anything on these weekend nights that made me feel lesser. I only focused on things that made me feel better. So game night, lots of friends, lots of laughs. Dogs slept through most of it. (laughs) The gift of senior dogs. And then we cleaned up after everyone left. Also, we had everyone over at five. We told them to come by five because then I knew they'd be there by six. And then we'd play and then everyone left at 10. We cleaned up and we were in bed by 1045. That is a perfect. Saturday night, in my personal opinion, in bed, 1045. Perfect. So Friday was 
chill at home, regroup. Saturday was out in the world, get stuff done, but also spend time with my people and people who bring us joy. And then Sunday was like, get outside in nature. I did have a little bit of work to do. So I was on my computer a little bit, but we also spent time hiking. There's a great trail behind, if you're in LA, Hollywood Reservoir goes up to the Wisdom Tree. You can take it all the way to the Hollywood sign. So we hiked that. I think it was only like four or five miles, but it was pretty steep. So we brought our two smallest dogs, hiked the whole thing, got home, got ready, went to a Super Bowl party, the Chiefs won. Yay, that had nothing to do with my mindset, just so you guys know. It was thrilling, but like not a game changer. And that was the whole weekend. And I was able to go to sleep on Sunday, knowing that I fed my soul with things that would put me back on top today. Because on Friday, when none of the things that I thought were going to happen happened, and I felt like shit, I had the thought, how am I going to do this again next week? And that is a surefire sign to me that I need to pump the brakes and work on my mindset. So I spent all weekend filling my soul. Back Monday, Monday's today, I'm ready for my next audition. And because I had this time to sit with it and process it and talk to the right people and do the things I wanted to do, I can also tell you right now that I now see all these things as victories. There was a couple other things that went into the week that made it a little more complicated that kind of have less to do with acting. But knowing that this is all good stuff, it's all huge wins, I'm able to see that now. And I was not able to see that when I was feeling my feelings. If I hadn't let myself feel them, they would probably still be in the back of my mind right now. But I'm able to acknowledge what happened and move on. And listen, there's going to be 20-ish, 30, if I'm lucky, more weekends like this in the coming year. But knowing that this is how I can get myself back on the horse for the following week for whatever auditions come it makes it much more doable. These are not big problems, but our brains can build them into big problems. So if we can't find ways to process the small things, it's going to be really hard to process the big things when we get there. So that's my weekend. That's kind of how I rolled with it. If you are listening to this podcast on the YouTube video, you'll see I have some videos and some fun stuff and pictures that I shared from the weekend to make it a little more visually interesting. (laughs) But I appreciate you guys being here for this. Like I said, the podcast is kind of shifting. We're adding some more of me into it. So if you guys liked this, I would really appreciate if you dropped it down in the comments or left a review on Apple Podcasts. Let me know how you guys feel about these more solo style episodes and how you guys get yourself out of these mental shifts. I would love even more advice for next time. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching and I will talk to you next week.